YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back with the 2v2 in Total War Warhammer. There be rockets and cannons, apparently. So the Empire rocking some rockets. Ha! <laughs> and a giant cannon. And it would appear that the Beastmen are reaping the rewards of said artillery. If by rewards, I mean flaming death. And it is causing a considerable amount of flaming death right now on some pretty important Bestigore units. So let's check out the armies. Uh, for the Beastmen, I see six units of Bestigore, which is quite heavy. A couple Ungor Spear, a few Ungor Raiders. We've got a Beast Lord, two Gorbuls, Brace Shame of the Wild, one more Bestigore. These must be like large unit settings. It's got to be because the number of units we're seeing. So over here, Glady on a Dragon. Assume it's the Glady. Yes, that would be the Glady, I believe. So. Got the Glady, Forest Dragon, Spell Singer, Lore of Beast, a couple of wider or a Wild Rider and a Sisters of the Thorn, Blade Guard with Starfire Shafts, front line of Wildwood Rangers, and a couple of Eternal Guards with Shields in the back. Empire Army is probably, yeah, it's looking like great swords up front, halberds on the flanks, silver bullets, and other guns in the back. General of the Empire, Empire Captain, Light Wizard, we've got the Sun Maker. Which would explain the amount of rockets. Royal Altdorf Griffites, there's a cannon here. Some Knights of the Blazing Sun. Norgrimling's Iron Breakers, and several more units of Iron Breakers up front. That is a lot of Iron Drakes, several of them. Amber Spear, interesting choice. It did nothing. So we got a Rune Lord. Looks like uh, four units of Quarrelers. Five, no. Yeah, five units of Quarrelers and a ton of Iron Breakers. This ought to be interesting. The Beastmen army is just being savaged by the Sunmaker. It's moving up in relatively blocky uh, formations here, and the Sunmaker's already racked up 81 kills, and those kills are going to continue at a rather rapid pace if the Beastmen don't hurry and engage. Looks like the uh, Bestigore herd are going to engage, but if they've taken any significant damage, and it looks like these guys are just going to engage head-on there, too. So going 2-1 to one here. Yeah, the Beastmen looks like maybe they've yeah, they've accidentally clicked several units into the same attack order. So a huge mistake here from the Beastmen. The Empire guns are not in a... They're in a position to fire down, but they're not in a position to shoot a whole lot right here. Maybe in between these lines a little bit. But even they're not really shooting there. The Glade Guard are up, and they've opened fire on some of the Iron Drakes. Look at the Iron Drakes! Spit roasting this uh, spell singer on an eagle. She's gonna have to back off. The starfire shafts having almost minimal effect on the iron drakes too. They're firing up here, but it's doing next to nothing. I guess the damage resistance of the dwarves is really paying off. These are 120 armor, or I say damage resistance, magic resistance. The beastmen continues in a very slow and clumsy attack here, so. No offense to the Beastmen player, but I'm not quite sure what's going on, and the Empire is having quite the time, and really what I'm interested in down here is I want to see these uh, flamethrowers, because the Elves are a low armor faction, and there's a bunch of Quarrelers to force them forward, and coming forward into the face of flamethrowers and ironbreakers should put a pretty quick end to the Elves, and be pretty hilarious all at the same time. So I am actually kind of looking forward to seeing this, just for this reason, if nothing else. So, yep, here comes the uh, Elf Torch. Holy moly. Woo! Gonna get a little warm. Today's forecast, um, slightly on fire, with a chance of explosions. Yeah. This is really not where you want to be in life if you're an elf. And if you're a Dolly with a grudge against elves, then you're having a good day. Grudges will be settled. Grudges will be settled. Holy cow. Look at the devastation <laughs> from those iron drakes. <laughs> unbelievable amount of damage that they did. I mean, when you don't have armor, I say it's unbelievable. When you don't have armor, that's what happens. Wow. So I was told to watch this battle just for that reason, and I would say that it was worth it. 
it was worth it just for that scene. Simply like, air. There wasn't a lot of strategy in this battle. Uh, well, you know what? Obviously, the players here aren't operating at the highest levels of the game, but it was pretty fun. And you have to admit, getting to see units like this actually get used in a scenario where they will be useful is pretty entertaining. And it teaches you a lesson here: is the uh, elves. If you do play as the elves, and even if you brought Treek in, I think you would have to have a pretty healthy respect for units of Iron Drakes if you didn't have the ranged units to properly deal with them. Look at the Iron Drakes, man. These guys are just flat out bombing everything. It's not looking good for the Wood Elves or for the Beastmen, and then they're off in some very odd scattered formation that Beastmen was probably pretty new here would be my only guess. Now, Forest Dragon ought to be susceptible to flaming damage, I believe. No? Hmm. It's not, actually. It must just be a uh, tree kin. Yeah, it must just be tree kin and, um, what do you call it? Tree kin and uh, dryads. Yeah, the dwarves uh, absolutely mop the floor with the wood elves over here. The clay garb of starfire shafts have just been firing away and causing very little damage. Uh, the, the dwarves are well armored. They have 25% resistance to magic, which the attacks off Blade Guard are magic attacks. So yeah, it is just um, not going to get the job done. Now look at this, the uh, flamethrowers moving in. I guess the long, thin lines for the flamethrowers may be part of what's helping them too. Yeah. Little fire for you elves, little fire. The elves might want to uh, recruit Smokey the Bear as their next legendary lord, as he may be of some use to them. Looks like some of the uh, shots from the uh, Glade Guard are actually hitting the trees, so that might explain some of the reduced damage as well. But otherwise, yeah, these dragons are going to succumb to the overwhelming odds that they're under. Corlers, very, very superior missile on missile skirmish units because of their shields and long range, and pretty solid damage stats. So as long as they're firing at stuff that's not armored, whirlers will be quite effective. Are these iron drakes going in in melee? Don't do it. Use the flamethrowers. Point blank if you must. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go in in melee, maybe. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, that was pretty fun to see. I'll see if I got another battle to show you. I think we've seen pretty much the uh, best of the uh, flame shore action, so I'm going to go ahead and put out of that replay. And uh, it's not going to show the results because I didn't go all the way to the end, but I'm pretty sure I had one more I wanted to show you all. Let's see. Uh, I think it was this one. Dwarves and Beastmen. Yeah, because I showed you the Beastmen Vanguard Army. We showed you the trolls versus the dwarves. So that was pretty fun. So let's go watch this one, which is obviously the name suggests it's a very close battle. I'd like to see how this one turns out. Maybe this one will provide the uh, tactical gameplay, whereas the other one provided some very good entertainment and watching them elves get burned and kersploded. Yes, I said them elves. That was on purpose. And no, Arkansas is not getting to me. All right, so harpies, harpies, brace shaman beast. I should have just looked at the armies before I came in. So four best of gore herd, gore herd. One on Gore Herd. Sent to Gores with great weapons. Beast Lord on a chariot. Dolly over here with Dwarf Warriors up front, except for the Norgrimling's Iron Breakers, which is going to be a considerably powerful unit against the Beastmen here. The Rangers with great weapons. Uh, good choice for trying to deal with Gore Bulls. And there's three Slayers. Also, probably not a bad choice because a lot of Beastmen army are typically low in armor. And you're typically going to get hit by a lot of chariots as well. Now, harpies might do okay versus rangers, but something tells me they probably really won't. I think uh, I don't think the dwarf player knows that the main portion of the beastman army is up here on the hill because he's not facing it. Yeah, now he sees it. So we'll fast forward. The uh, beastmen are trying to take their time and make use of um, the uh, flock of doom to its greatest effect. And so the Brace Shaman of Beast is back here just casting Flock of Doom as often and as constantly as he is able. 
Now this is actually kind of good for the Beastmen. It minimized the number of Satchel charges they ate. And they did a lot of damage. But they're going to get backed up by Grumbling Guard. I don't think the best of Gore Herd can really break through here successfully. The Rangers, though, uh, wasting uh, some of their... Ooh. So that was the Ring of Thori. Didn't quite hit its mark. And a very nice Flock of Doom coming in here. Here comes the Beast Lord on his chariot. Immediately trying to get back into the Rangers with great weapons. But he slows down here. And he's marked by Uthar. Yeah, he is going to get absolutely nuked. So Beast Lord in big trouble. The Harpies come in. Trying to stop the other Rangers with great weapons. Rangers should probably do alright versus Harpies. It's the Chariots that's doing all the damage. With the Slayers in here, the uh, Chariots can't afford to slow down for long. Especially the Dragonback Slayers forcing them to slow down. And the Bestigor herd, while doing good versus Dwarf Warriors, is absolutely melting against the Norgrimling's Ironbreakers and the Grumbling Guard, despite being two units in the fight. More Flock of Doom, but it's not causing a lot of damage. Gore herd are around the flanks. If the Slayers can intercept them, that would be ideal. And they should do all right versus Gore herd, because Gore herd are low, low armor. The uh, Rangers with great weapons. Oh, there's four of them. I missed that earlier. So here comes the Centigors with great weapons. One unit out front, the other on the flank. So some of the Beastmen have broken up front, but other places the Beastmen are actually breaking through. This is going to put the uh, Rangers with great weapons at pretty high risk here, being lost. You can see the Centigors now moving in. If the Centigors aren't stopped rather quickly, they could put a fast end to the... Um, the rangers that so you can see the beastmen making an outflanking attempt here on the rangers which is quite nice might be able to get two for one here yeah this is going to work out really nicely for the beastmen an attempt at the fiery ring there that fiery ring would be best used on the uh, gores because they're lower armor it's not going to do as much to the best gore and at this point the uh, dwarven rangers are in big trouble and they will be fairly important if they can survive. If not, then the dwarves lose a big tool. We are relentless. We'll just kind of see how this plays out here. The uh, gore herds are not going to do well against armored dwarf infantry, but a lot of the armored dwarf infantry was eaten up by the Vestigor. And over here, the Centigor is with 100 kills already. Very impressive work. 50 over here. So good against armor, fast, decent charge bonus. Centigors are going to do considerable damage to Dawa units if they don't stay in an unfavorable melee engagement with Slayers. The Dwarf Lord is quite healthy, though he is the only hero, so this this Dwarf Army can't come down to rely on like three or four different heroes and expect to win. Now look at this, the Rangers actually fought their way out of some of that infantry, and there's 45 kills already on Wulthar's Raiders. These guys are not bad in close combat. They're not spectacular, but they're not bad. The Norgrimling's Ironbreakers chucking a few satchel charges before rejoining their lord. And over here, the uh, Ungor herd just can't seem to fight its way through the few Dawe that remain. The last of the Rangers has been cleaned up. But the Beastmen are without a lord, and they're without a Bray Shaman. Which is going to leave them at a substantial disadvantage in terms of leadership. Now that Fire Ring got some work done right there. That's what I'm talking about. The Gore Herd and the Centigors ate that. And now the Dwarf Lord becomes a major threat. Because the Beastmen have very little left to deal with them. So the Chariots, I think, were a good pick. I don't think the Centigors were a bad pick either, clearly. If you look at the merits here, 151 kills. Absolutely huge number of kills. Very impressive on the Centigors. And a lot of the Dwarf Infantry is going to go away. There's a few Dragonback Slayers left here. They're unbreakable. There's only two of them. This Ranger regrouped out here. Could be critical if it gets some good hits. But it looks like the Centigors have immediately identified it. Yeah, and they're not even going to get a volley off. So they're goners. That's Centigore, man. It's getting some work done. It's almost a two ship. Just hit two chevrons and 166 kills. Vestigore unit comes back. The Dwarf Lord has a potion. If he's already used it, some chance for the Beastmen here, but very little. And if he has, hasn't used the potion, then the Beastmen are absolutely screwed. We'll see. The Dwarf Lord is tanky, but he is not, like, the crazy best lord. 
it's kind of that trade-off, right? You take a standard Lord, they get a potion, but they tend to do a little less damage versus enemies than some of the uh, legendary Lords. You can see he's holding his own. He's up to 94 kills, which is nothing bad. He's a melee expert. 420 weapon strength. Depending on his splash damage, he can be pretty good. And if that fiery ring lines up, there is a good line for it. If he's able to get it back here. Looks like these Centigors are trying to mop up the last couple of Norgrimlings Ironbreakers. And the, the rest of these Centigors are going to come swing in here and put an attack on the Dwarf floor. They do pretty good damage there. They would need to cycle some, but yeah. The uh, Dwarf Lord used his potion. I, I don't see any way the Beastmen get back in this fight. There are four Ulthar's Ranger, or Raiders. Yeah, they've rerouted. And there's just a small handful of uh, Beastmen units left. And the Dwarf Lord is at 126 kills and quite healthy. So I think the Dwarf Lord is quite likely going to carry the day. And although he'll be the only one that remembers the grudges that were settled this day, he'll be the one that settles them. Yeah, those Centigors had a pretty good performance. I like seeing Centigors with great weapons. They're actually one of my uh, favorite units in the game for whatever reason. They're quite handy. If you can fool an opponent into landing a flyer near them, especially if you got some poison warhounds to support, it can be pretty impressive. Centigore is being used for some cycle charges, but I don't know how their leadership is holding up. And I, I don't think there's any way it can hold up long enough to actually get something done here. They're staggering the Dwarf Lord, and but the damage that they're doing isn't as ferocious as the charges look. So I don't think so. We'll see, though. Dwarf Lord's not exactly meant to fight large cavalry-type units. Fiery Ring hit this regrouped unit of Ungor Herd, which routed. See if any of that armor piercing damage comes to bear there. Almost no damage to the Dwarf Lord right there from the charge, and as they disengage, they're going to get the attack in the rear penalty, probably. Another charge on the Dwarf Lord. But very little damage being done to the uh, Dwarf Lord at this point. Should just be a simple matter of tanking it out. Let's get up close and watch it. So for those of you who like the Dawi, today's your day. Any grudges you had against the Beastmen are being settled. I guess I can't say that for the rest of the uh, Dawi army, though, which was routed. I am really actually in somewhat of awe here that the Beastmen continue to regroup. They haven't broken due to army losses. That was a few bestic were heard that had regrouped there. No, gore herd. My bad. Misidentification. See, so yeah, it looks like the dwarf lord's gonna come down to about half health. There's only so many centigors left, and I just I mean they could try staggering him to death. Yeah, there you go. The leadership's not gonna hold. That's gonna be that. So, now there was a fun battle. Hope you all enjoyed that one. Fun picks by both players. There's a lot of best of herd, which I guess kind of makes sense against the dwarves, especially if they haven't picked a double runesmith build. Uh, a runesmith build would absolutely take a dump all over uh, best of gore like that. They, they would just absolutely crap on the infantry so fast that I don't think the chariots could make up for it. To me, that's one of the biggest dangers that some factions face, like especially the Beastmen. They've only got one infantry unit that's good against armor, and if that's the infantry unit you bring, they're pretty expensive, and if you bring a lot of them, the dwarves can absolutely melt them with the runesmiths, so you got to watch out for that. And then or rangers with great weapons are a much bigger threat to gore bulls these days, especially if deployed properly, so Beastmen kind of have to watch out against the dwarves. They have to be fast and decisive in order to, to get stuff done. But fun battle, appreciate uh, Iron Fist and Sandblasted Skin here for the fun battle. And appreciate the folks who submitted the 2v2 as well. I enjoyed watching the elves get kersploded and burned. Thank you for the awesome entertainment. Hope you all enjoyed it. Appreciate you being here tonight. Can't wait to bring you more content soon. Air of Carthage, signing out.